Hi everybody, welcome back to Sunshine Soap and Candle Company. Today we're going to be making a luxurious, creamy, herbal infused hand and body lotion. Behind the scenes I've been working with lots of different emulsifiers and thickeners and gel makers to come up with the perfect consistency of the lotion that I was going for, which is a really smooth, soft, silky consistency, something that soaks in right away and also feels very soothing to the skin. I think I've come up with a really good formula. I can't wait to share it with you guys. I think you're gonna love it. And in this video today, I'm gonna be sharing with you a full visual step-by-step -step process and tutorial of how to put together this beautiful, luxurious cream. And if you would like the full written recipe and tutorial with percentages and a full detailed written tutorial, please head on over to my Patreon campaign where you can unlock this recipe at just the $5 level. Not only can you unlock this recipe, but you can unlock all archived recipes on the campaign. And we have over two and a half years now of published recipes we post every week. So there's a ton to take advantage of in all different areas. There are also four other exclusive tiers over there, each with their own benefit. And we have a new one that we just added a couple weeks ago now, and it's a $7 tier. And it's perfect because it gets you everything that the $5 tier gets, including access to weekly tutorials and archived recipes and posts, but you get one bonus recipe every month as well. So I really hope you'll consider joining us. I'll leave the link in the description box below. It's a great way to connect with me and other makers and to support my campaign so I can continue to bring you great content. All right, let's make some beautiful herbal infused cream. Okay, so before we get started, it's really important to note that we are making a cosmetic cream. And so it's super important to make sure your workstation and anything that's gonna be coming into contact with your ingredients or your finished product has been thoroughly cleaned and sanitized. Uh, we don't wanna introduce any germs or bacteria into the product. We do not want mold or anything like that growing. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and weigh off our water phase ingredients. So this recipe, this formula is broken up into three parts, a water phase, an oil phase, and a cool down phase. And we are gonna be doing a water and oil emulsion. So we are gonna be combining those ingredients together. So the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and weigh off some distilled water. It's important to use distilled water when you're making creams because they don't have any minerals or heavy metals in them. So we're gonna be going, we're making a 400 gram batch today. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and add in some calendula hydrosol. Now, the reason we're using a calendula hydrosol here is because calendula is, calendula is known for its anti-inflammatory, anti-redness, and soothing properties. And like I mentioned in the intro, we are making a soothing lotion. So this will help calm the skin, help with irritation and redness. So we are using a calendula hydrosol. For those of you that don't know, calendula is that beautiful, bright, orangey, yellow marigold plant. And you can, you can distill it and get hydrosols out of it. And you can also infuse your oils with the plant matter and all of that. It's a beautiful flower to work with. All right, into our distilled water and calendula hydrosol, we're gonna be adding in our humectant. Now our humectant is gonna be what's responsible for drawing moisture to the skin. For our humectant today, we're using something called 1,3 propanadiol. And this is a really nice humectant because it's got a lot of like skin conditioning and emollient properties to it as well. Okay, so that is it for the water phase. We're just gonna go ahead and give this a good stir. And we're gonna set this aside. Next up is our oil phase ingredients. Okay, to a separate beaker, I've already set the water phase ingredients aside. And in my separate beaker here, I'm gonna be adding in my emulsifier first. So I'm gonna be using something called Cream Maker Blend. I got this from Making Cosmetics. This is a combination of glycerol stearate and PEG 100 stearate. 
And it's a beautiful emulsifier. If you have never tried this one before, I really encourage you to give it a try. It really is a, it emulsifies completely. You don't need a secondary emulsifier for this. And it gives your, um, your formula a nice, light, airy consistency. Uh, it's a really nice emulsifier to use because it does help with the spreadability of your lotions and creams as well. So I really like this one. It's called Cream Maker Blend from Making Cosmetics or you can get Glycerol Sterate Peg 100 Sterate. So we're gonna go ahead and add this in. This is what's gonna combine the oils and the waters together so that they don't separate. And it has a lot of other nice properties to it. So to the glycerol sterate, we're gonna be adding in some liquid oil. Now I'm super excited about this. Um, I made my own oil infusion. This is sunflower oil, which typically is a pale yellow color. But as you can see, I've got a really dark, opaque green. That's because I infused this oil with comfrey. Now comfrey is a plant that is dark green in nature. Here, this is a dried version of comfrey plant. And I got this from Nature's Garden. And once you infuse your oils with it completely, you get that nice, rich, dark green color. Now, basically an oil infusion is when you pour your oils over your herbs or your flowers and you let it steep or infuse for a period of time. I will go into complete detail in my tutorial about how I infuse this, how I did this particular infusion so that you can make, make it the same way. But basically that's all it is. I applied a little bit of heat um, into a crock pot with this sitting in a hot water bath. And then I actually allowed this to sit um, in a warm window for a, about a week after I warmed it up. But I'll give complete instructions on how I got this infusion. And the reason why we're using comfrey in this formula is because comfrey is high in its allantoin content and that is very, very soothing to the skin. So allantoin we know is great for redness, irritation, um, rashes, sunburns. You find allantoin a lot in different types of ointments um, and creams, things like that. So we have infused our oil today with comfrey and let me tell you, it just adds something really, really special to this lotion. And it at the end product, you're gonna see this beautiful kind of light green color that the lotion takes on after everything is all emulsified. Now I'm getting a little stir stick here available because sometimes when you pour from a mason jar it likes to drizzle down the sides. Okay, and there you have it. The next thing we're gonna be adding into this oil phase is actually some shea butter. So we're gonna be adding shea butter in for its beautiful hydrating properties. Um, also, it's great for mature skin. It really does a lot to help hydrate your skin as well. It's got a lot of really nice healing properties to it. And it's a great, it's got great skin feel in lotions. Next up, we're gonna be adding in our thickener. Now, this is something that you guys have not seen me use yet. And I've been doing some experimenting with it and I absolutely love it. You're gonna be seeing this come up in lots of other formulations here soon. So make sure if you don't have this ingredient, if this is something that you want to do, if you wanna make the same things I am, you're gonna be seeing this in some, some formulas coming up. It's called Sepamax Zen. Its inky name is Polyacrylate Cross Polymer 6. This is a gel maker. Now you guys have seen me use uh, Carbopool or Carbomir or Carbomer in other gel type um, formulas. And I am really turning to this one now probably solely because you don't have to adjust the pH. It's very, very stable. With the, with the car bomber, you guys have seen me use that before, you have to adjust the pH or it goes flat. And it's very, very particular with its pH range. So once you start adding things into it, um, it loses that, that gel-like consistency 
that you worked so hard to achieve. It's just a very particular product to work with where this one, the Sepamax Zen, is not. It works with a wide range of pHs and it holds its consistency perfectly. I really like it. Um, this is gonna give our cream thickness, but it's also gonna give it a little bit of a like gel kind of bounce to it. And I think it really helps with spreadability, actually. Um, it goes onto the skin and it feels velvety, soft, silky, and smooth. So I'm in love with this product. Probably gonna be seeing a lot of this coming up soon. So we're gonna go ahead and add the Sepamax Zen to our oil phase. By the way, in other formulations, you can add this in at in the water phase to make a um, water-based gel. So it's very versatile and super lightweight. That's why you're seeing that it's looks like a lot is going in here, but by weight, it's not that much. Okay, we're gonna stop there. And then the next thing that we're gonna do is go ahead and place these both into a makeshift double boiler. So all I'm gonna do is fill my saute pan with a couple inches of water and I'm gonna go ahead and heat up the water and oil phases down till everything is the same temperature and my um, shea butter and my cream maker blend is all melted down and everything's evenly distributed. And then we'll be taking it off the stove and I'll bring you back for the next step. Okay, so everything has been melted down now and thoroughly warmed up and our water phase and our oil phase are sitting both at around 160 degrees. So we're gonna go ahead and combine the two together. Now you're gonna see this is not completely opaque because of that Sepamax Zen. You're gonna see some white powdery bits. That's okay, everything will get dispersed as we emulsify it. You want to definitely, you're going to definitely want to use a stick blender or an immersion blender for this process. But as you can see, it's already turning white. Isn't that gorgeous? What, how it starts to emulsify. And we're just going to go ahead and slowly blend. Okay, so now that we have a complete emulsion here, I just wanted to show you, it took a few times of blending on high speed because this thickens up super quickly, scraping down everything, stir hand stirring, and then blending again. You just wanna make sure all the lumps and the powdery bits are completely ground up, blended up. And this will thin out some, but I wanted to show you what the texture looks like. We're still sitting pretty hot, pretty warm here at 100, I'm getting about 120, 122 degrees. Um, and look, it's got a very like bouncy, kind of gel-like texture. So we're gonna let this come down in temperature. And in the meantime, we are gonna weigh off our cool down phase ingredients. So once we add our cool down phase ingredients because they're liquid ingredients, you'll see that that texture of our cream will thin out just a bit. Okay, so the first ingredient of our cool down phase we're gonna be adding here is bamboo extract. Bamboo extract is really good for hair and skin um, structure and I got this from Wholesale Supplies Plus. So we're gonna be adding in a little bamboo extract. And then to this, we're gonna be adding in some honey quat. Honey quat is a honey product. It's a humectant, but it's thinned out, it's water soluble. You can use this in place of glycerin or in addition to glycerin if you want something really hydrating. This will help with hydration and also bring some conditioning um, properties to your formula. So we're gonna go ahead and add in some honey quat. I got this one from Brambleberry. Let me go ahead and get a beaker to finish this off. Okay, and then the next cool down ingredient we're gonna be putting in here is our fragrance oil. Now, this is optional. Of course, you don't have to use fragrance at all. If you don't use any fragrance, just you can up your um, sunflower oil a bit. You can just substitute it. You can just replace it with more of the infused sunflower oil. Um, 
or you can use essential oil of your choice as long as it's skin safe. But since I'm using sunflower oil, I thought it would be nice to use a sunflower type fragrance. And this one is Sunflower and Sandalwood by Brambleberry and it smells awesome. It smells, I said this in my last video regarding um, the fragrance I used last time, the Bubble Bath Freesia or the Freesia bubble, bubble Bath that it reminded me of something. And this one also does too. This sunflower and sandalwood reminds me, I think, a little bit like the, um, maybe you guys can chime in and let me know too what you think. But to me, it kind of smells like the um, Clinique fragrance called Sunflower, except this one, it's got that definite sandalwood undertone. So it brings in kind of a, less of a citrusy tart note, I think that the Clinique brand has, and more of a sunflower fragrance, kind of that sunflower fragrance, but it's anchored by that beautiful woodsy vanilla sunflower, um, sandalwood note. It's really gorgeous. And then the last thing we're gonna do is go ahead and add in our Optifin preservative. And we're using Optifin today because it works great in lotions and creams. And you do need a preservative since we are combining uh, oils and waters together. And if you don't add a preservative, your product will grow mold and bacteria quickly within a matter of days. Okay, and we're just gonna give this a stir to combine these ingredients. And when our formula is right around 100, 100 degrees or so, we'll add in all these cool down ingredients and show you what that looks like. Okay, so we're sitting right around 100 degrees now and we're ready to go ahead and add in that cool down phase. And I just wanted to show you the texture. It's just gorgeous. And I think you're really gonna like the final product here. But see that beautiful kind of pale, pale green color from the oil infusion? I think it's gorgeous. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and add in our cool down phase ingredients and we're gonna give it a good blend with the stick blender. All right, so this cream now is right around room temperature and I wanted to give you, room temperature in my house right now is around 75 degrees. So I wanted to go ahead and give you a final visual on the consistency so you can see. It's got a really kind of luxurious, creamy, but also gel-like consistency. And so it's very, very smooth to um, spread onto your skin and it feels very velvety soft. So we're gonna go ahead and place this into our containers. And I'm using these gorgeous airless pumps. And you guys have seen me use these before with some facial washes. These are the lids. I think they're super slick. I'm so sad because I didn't buy that many of them. I got them from Berlin Packaging and I've been trying to restock them because I just bought a little bit to test out how I liked it. And I really, really love these containers. So um, they are out of stock at the moment at Berlin Packaging and I'm hoping they'll come back soon. I put my name on a wait list, but um, I've been looking all over the place for the exact same ones and I literally cannot find them. So hopefully they'll be back soon because they're just gorgeous for this. This formula works really, really well in these pumps. All right, we're just gonna go ahead and place the lids on. I had a little extra, so I put it in this four ounce container. Probably could have done better with just a two ounce container. So these hold about roughly 200 grams of product a piece. So they have these beautiful air pump, airless pump lids. We're gonna go ahead and place them on. Again, um, I can't find these at the moment anywhere. So I'm still on the hunt. I'm hoping that they come back in stock soon. So we're just gonna go ahead and place these on and I'll be right back to give you a product demo. All right, here they are all bottled up, looking absolutely gorgeous. 
I just love the look of these containers so much. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of a product demo. So with these containers, because it's an airless pump, you're just gonna prime the top until a little bit comes out. And what it does is it pushes up from the bottom. So I'll show you what that looks like. There we go. It's got a gorgeous consistency. A little bit goes a long way. It feels so good. Do you see how there's no white streaking whatsoever with this cream? It just soaks right in and it feels velvety soft, smooth, super, super hydrating. I'm absolutely in love with this formula. I am really considering possibly adding this to my product line. I'm looking at a little bit of a, um, a rehaul of my product line actually here soon. So I've just got a lot of new ideas. So anyway, I'm really, really liking this formula. I hope you really liked this video. That concludes today's video. But just to give you a little visual of the um, texture of this, see how it's just kind of like gel-like, but also very, very creamy and luxurious. So I hope that you make this cream. I hope you really like it. If you do, please let me know. I'd love to know what your results were with this and if you liked it. That concludes today's video. I hope you liked it. I hope it inspired you. I hope you learned something. If you did, please remember to give this video a thumbs up. Please remember to leave a comment or question below. Subscribe to my channel and share this video with a friend. Catch you on the next video. Bye.